Okay, so today this is the fourth and fifth lecture together. Yesterday we, we gave we we talked about flyers, 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 and all things, and then we mentioned now flyers is quite attractive. I'll give you an I'll mention something like that. One. I have one of my former co-student, he is now in uh, Saudi Arabia and he is an assistant professor in university. So, I sent this information about this Gian thing to him and he said he, he, want, he was keen to come, but they would recommend only the local people. And then he passed it on to one of his local friends there. And he worked, but then Selvin had told, told me, sir, most likely it will be approved, but it gets approved on the very last day. So, yesterday received an email from that academic in Saudi Arabia that he has been approved and he will be coming this afternoon. So, tomorrow we will have a Saudi Arabian friend. Okay, so it will, it will be nice. And you can find out Saudi Arabia is also very good and they, they offer a lot of employment and things like that and they are very good in research. So, I, I do not know that person is Sylvan Thomas's friend, but keep in touch with them because they have also <coughs> calls and other things. All right. But it is good to see that Fly has attracted someone from Saudi Arabia and he will come from Dubai to Lucknow, there are direct flights. All right. Now, we talk about cement, there are some people who know much more about cement than me. Now, civil engineers work on cement, but often chemists, they know more about cement rather than the civil engineers. Okay. So, this, these slides, there are about 60 slides, so I will break it up into lectures, picture 4 and 5. Now, I have worked with professors of civil engineering in my university and I also have, a, for the last five years, I have a research collaboration with a professor uh, in Cal State Fullerton, Cal California State University Fullerton. No, that was about 10, 15 years ago. And I also have one with, with professor in uh, North Carolina State University. USA. I have research with civil engineering in IIT Kharagpur, Professor John N. Bandubadai, and also EMPA uh, Switzerland is a advanced material for testing and characterization. And there, that, that pro Professor Ursmeyer, he was the first person who actually changed all this, you know this light poles when you have on the roadside and things, it made of timber, trees. He changed all that and he actually introduced this carbon fiber reinforced composites, all those things. So, in throughout in Switzerland, Switzerland is a very good country. It is different, it is independent. That is why they can do there. And I happen to be in EPFL Lausanne for three months and also I went to Zurich. So, this shows that I have learnt a lot of things about application of materials and things in structural thing, okay? And what they found when I, they found that if they work with a person with the materials, engineering and material science background, they can also know more about how structure property correlation comes, all right? So, that is what it is important that I mention and my gratefulness to all these professors of civil engineering. And now I know there are professors of civil engineering here. Okay. Good morning. We will go to the next slide. Now, Portland cement, it has the important physical properties, and their fineness, that means it is not beauty, it is very beautiful because otherwise there will be no structure, but fineness means small particle size. Okay. Soundness, that means they are not, they do not have much of flaws, they are sound, they are 
P O. Okay. Consistency that means their compositions and things do not keep on varying, they are consistent within a certain limit. Setting time because it takes time. So when you when they make cement or things like that on the first day at least first ninety these days the cement sets much faster than it used to be earlier. The first ninety to hundred minutes it sets and then then becomes stronger and stronger. Now, cement has high compressive stress. The advantage of compressive stress is that under pressure, so when you when you have a bridge, things like that, and trucks are going, so this it gives compression and from there is some kind of shear. So it does not break under the cement is a bit unstable under high tension. That's why people use composite materials in that, because then the composite materials take up the tension. Okay, and the cement actually transfers the load as, as the matrix. Heat of hydration, that means when it absorbs moisture, it becomes hot. Okay, so that is what's keeping normal. We think when you go and have a shower, if you take cold water, the body gets cold. But even if you put that cold water in the cement, the cement body gets hot. That's wonderful because if it becomes hot, then the reactivity improves. Are you familiar with the fact that for every 10 degrees centigrade increase in temperature, the reaction reactivity goes up by factor of 2. Did you know that? So, that means if the temperature goes up by 40 degrees, then it will go up by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so 16 times. So, that is a very simple thing, but it is normally accepted. So, please remember that. All right. Okay. Specific properties and loss of ignition. Specific properties means some some particular properties and also in the specific properties is per unit volume or per unit gram per unit mass. And loss of ignition. So it doesn't it doesn't get a lot of ignited and also some of the things when it solidifies there is some loss there that means it may lose a bit of weight, all right. Now, each of these properties has influence on the performance of portland cements. Thus, different types of portland cements are manufactured to meet different physical and chemical properties for specific purposes. And then they depending on the American Society for Testing Materials and also A H2. So these are specifications. There are eight types of cements for different uses shows in table 6, because this I put table 6, we are continuing from the first lecture. As I said, this is based on the on the work which we did and published in the NOVA book in the first chapter. <coughs> cement type 1, general purpose cement. So, there are no extenuating conditions. Cement type 2, aids in providing moderate resistance to sulphate attack. Cement type 3, when high early strength is required, you use that type. Cement type 4, when a low heat of hydration is desired in massive structure, that means if you have a huge structure, you use cement which does not become create very hot. Because if you create very hot, there, there is bricks and tiles and other things there. there it, it will the temperature will tend to expand it, and they have very limit, very low expansion allowed expansion, so it might start cracking. So this is what is beauty about science and engineering. Okay, so you have to know what happens, and all these things have to be considered. Think of the worst thing before what can happen, and then work on the basis of that. All right, that's why engineers are always more important, particularly together with the scientific groups. When I say engineer, to me, anyone working in the engineering field with science or engineering background is an engineer. And likewise, any engineer having knowledge of physics and chemistry and 
electro electricity, electronic and other areas, they are also their career is better because they can interact. When I used to, when I was selected for working in Australian Defence Science and Technology Organisation there, when I was in Melbourne, I applied and they gave me the job. And then when I went there, I found that I was given a job in a department which is organic chemistry division. So there were hun totally 100 people, including me, and 99 of them were organic chemists. And I was the only one. But I learned a lot there. For eight years, I was in the organic chemistry division. Then after two years, I was shifted to materials division. But uh, all this FTIR, Raman, and things like that. And one thing I like that, if you have a draw a straight line, chemist, so anything less than R square is 0 0.99, they will throw it away. But then gradually, I, I have to explain to them, no, even if R square is 0 0.8, straight line, accept it. Because these are engineering things, it's not your chemical structure. So eventually, I became a friend of them, and I learned a lot from them. And I also found that we had a good team. And when, you know, Australia has a very good relationship with the United States, and when there was wars in Vietnam and things like that, lots of things cracked and fractured. So America always sent to Australia to solve those problems. And some of those problems in the defense lab came to me, but because I was in the organic chemistry division, so I can use all all the, those facilities and also at the university, if I have to use an instant tensile test for one hour, I have to have fund for maybe sixty, seventy dollars, which is not easy. But there, when I have to do some research, I use like polycarbonate. Normally, people use it at a high standard, but I said no. Let's do it at a very slow standard, and doing one experiment, it took me more than a week, so 24 hours times 7, how much is that? How much is 24, close to about 164, 165, something like that, hours, and I did not have to pay any, anything in the defense department, all paid. But then when I used this to study PMMA, you know, polycarbonate is ductile, but PMMA, polymethyl methylate, it, it is it's much more brittle compared to what, but then I thought, hang on, people say brittle because they do test it at a high testing speed, and I said, okay, let's do it at a very slow, using the slowest speed in the instron, and I was so surprised that after one year, one week, it showed just as no breaking, it became so ductile, so that is the kind of thing which scientists and engineers have to work together that when the test methods, you do the test method according to that, because the ASTM whatever it is, because people want to do it quickly. But there are times when, like cement, it is there for a long time, and slowly it may take some. So you also have to do some of these measurements under slope. So it was really like innovation. So I was so happy, and then I passed on that information. Okay. So the more it kept on happening, the more all these problems came to our DST, DST Defense Science and Technology Organization, and they used to come floating to me. But I, I, I loved it. Okay, but that's what I said. I learned a lot from my chemist friends. Okay. All right. The type, type 3, when high early strength is required, why high early strength is required? Because sometimes you, when you make a structure, you cannot wait for 60 days to get the, the high strength. But you need certain structure so that you have, when a load or something is coming up there. So that is the kind of thing. So quick, quick curing is one thing. And then type 4, when a low heat of hydration is desired in massive structures, that means it does not get hot. 5, when 
I sulfate resistance is required. So that, because there is a lot of sulfate corrosion, things can happen in cement and concrete. So you have to have something which will not uh, have that problem. One A, a type one cement containing an air entraining agent, a type two cement containing an air entraining agent. So that means you actually have the type one, type two, type three, as you have seen on the top. But they have some of these things incorporated there, so that can have their properties better and better, and you can control it. So these are sourced from there, and these are. And the website is given at the bottom. Some other it cannot come up, but on the PDF file, it is there. Yes. How about chemists? Come on, my chemist friend, give your answer. Professor or Peter? Okay, thank you. And I learnt also that. <coughs> now, more than 92 percent Portland cement produced in the USA is type 1 and 2, or a mixture of type 1 and 2 together. Okay. Type 3 accounts for about 3.5 percent cement <coughs> production, and type 4 is about less than 0.5 percent of the production. Now, again, as I said, this is an area of chemists and civil engineers and also related fields and material scientists. What air entraining cements, the, they are the 1A, 2A, and 3A, which I, as I understand, even during the curing, it can absorb air, and that air forms a part of curing and strengthening it. Because air has lots of things like oxygen, nitrogen, little bit of other things, and nitrogen, oxygen. If they go there, they can if they can form oxides. Oxides. If you have a material and then it becomes oxide, the oxides are normally stronger. So this is what air in training things will do. Although they are available as options. Concrete producers prefer to use an air entraining mixture during the concrete manufacture, where they can get better control. That means what they say that they put something there, which they do it in the concrete manufacture, and because they don't want to leave it for continuous things. Because when you are working for a company, you have a limited time there. All right? Not like a PhD. How much does time does a PhD scholar get? Three years. Four years, one year, two year. In our university, four years is the limit. Okay. However, this kind of cement can be useful under conditions in which quality control is poor. I mean, those particular, those one, two, three, one, eight, two, eight, three, eight. Particularly when no means of measure. Me measuring the air content of fresh concrete is available. So, these are the things that these cements 
which are used in a very small quantity, they have selective performance. Now, if a given type of cement is not available, comparable results can frequently be obtained by using modification of very available types. That is a very good thing, like never give up. If a cement, you need a cement or a material and it does not dare, you can always combine different materials and make. That is what we have professors from uh, KIIT and he trains his PhD scholars that way and I am sure that is a very, very good thing. I would love to come to your universities if, if possible, KIIT. Yes, it is not in the walking distance, is not it? Is there a flight? Is there an air, uh, airport in Bhuvaneshwar? International airport, very good. First time when I went to Bhuvaneshwar, I was a school boy and I was a boy scout and I went at that time. Udayagiri, Khandagiri, is it in Bhuvaneshwar? Oh, I went up into the mountains. Oh, I will never forget that. Udayagiri, Khandagiri. Now, high early strength concrete, for example, can be made by a higher content type, content type of type 1 cement, when type 3 cement is not available, or by using admixtures such as chemical accelerators or high range water reducers. So, what is high range water reducers? It means that over a long period of time, it, you should not be allowed to take out more and more water, because the reaction is done, done. So, if you have more water, which is not required for chemical reaction, then it starts plasticizing, okay? Make, making the soft. So, these are the conditions which one has to keep, keep in mind. But as I say, never get totally upset. If something is wrong, there is always a way to, way to fix it. It may take time, okay? that is what science and engineering is all about. And IIT Kanpur is a very, very good institution, like all other universities. Now, the availability of Portland cements will be affected for years to come by energy and pollution requirements. What it means that governments get worried about this carbon carbon emission. What is it? You know the the carbon dioxide, yes, and then all these things. So, every time they try to make changes and things like that. Now, but those things are possible, but to that, when the government says that we have to do this, the government, those M MPs or MLAs, they cannot do anything. They will all come to you, people like you, okay, or the companies, or the, or the companies will come to you. So, give keep yourself free and you said yes we can do it. In fact, the increased attention to pollution, abatement, energy conservation has already greatly influenced the cement industry, especially the production of low alkali cements. And then using high alkali raw materials in the manufacture of low alkali cements, it requires bypass systems. So, to avoid concentrating alkali in the clinkers, which consumes more energy. So, this shows that if you do not have one type of cement, you can always go for another type of cement, but then you have to make some modifications, all right? It is like if you, if, you, if you like fruit drinks, and if you got a pineapple juice, and you drink it, and oh my, oh my God, it's very, this is very sour, then you go for another juice, okay? But you do not give up. All right, that's why there are so many varieties of things. Okay, why I said it happened this morning while I was having breakfast. Mom, have said I've given you pineapple juice. Is it very sour? I said no, it's beautiful because I had to come running. But you know that place where I'm living is uh, it's about 20-25 minutes walk from here. And I was wondering. I said, hang on, I have to be at. And as soon as I came out of the uh, of this guest house. I was crossing. All of a sudden, I found an auto was coming. And when the auto saw me walking, he stopped there. He said, do you want to go? I said, 
I can go, but मेरे जिम में पैसा तो नहीं है तो क्या सब पैसा देने के लिए ना आपको हमने बोला एक ऐसे होगा जैसे हमारे बैग में एक टोस्टेड ब्रेड था कब लोग हमने बोला आप हमको उधर से चोरा के मोर में उतर दे सकें लेकिन ये खाना आपको और पास रखना पड़ेगा क्योंकि सर ऐसे नो है आप हमको मदद करते हैं तो हम के हमारे पास रुपया नहीं है जेब में सो वी बिकम फ्रेंडली एंड सो दैट कट डाउन माय वॉकिंग टाइम बाय 15 मिनट्स बिकॉज़ आई वांटेड टू बी हियर एट लीस्ट 15 मिनट्स बिफोर द प्रेजेंटेशन सो आई फाउंड आई केम एंड आई फाउंड डॉक्टर कमल खर एंड दिस जेंटलमैन द वीडियो दिवा देयर सो आई वाज हियर बाय क्वार्टर पास्ट एट बिकॉज ऑलवेज दैट्स व्हेन आई वाज अ बॉय स्काउट वी आर थॉट टू डू दैट never be late find out a way to go out of time okay in the final one line it is estimated that 4% of energy used by the cement industry <coughs> could be saved by relaxing alkali specification so this again chemist and in civil engineers you can, you can you can interact with each other it will be good if people background in chemistry they they do some projects in civil engineering or other related engineering and also if civil engineers or civil engineers they go and work with chemists and physicists because that's what the best way to advance research now you might ask me sir early in the morning we are continuing all this on cement because we are talking about fly ash in the end so we have to see how important cement is what is the variation in cement what are the things that cement can do all right and or what are the things cement cannot do and that's where we'll see what fly ash can do so if cement can do everything fly ash will it has to be dumped in the ground or in the water but if cement cannot do something which fly ash can do then fly say okay i'm the, i have the smiling face hum ko tum ko lena padega all right so limiting use of low alkali cement to cases in which alkali reactive aggregates are used could lead to significant improvement in energy efficiency that's why i put it in blue blue color so that it is and on i still have my cup of tea those two specs astm and as to m85 are similar in every way except with regards to the fitness sorry to the fineness of cement now the second standard of specs they require coarser cement which will result in higher ultimate strength and early strength gain now <coughs> strength of cement is is a unique like its compressive strength strength is sometimes more important than tensile strength because it does not show much of tensile strength because if there are voids when you are doing <coughs> testing like when professor call made his presentation yesterday i was sitting in the back and so he showed all these graphs and, and so stress concentration comes if there is a circular hole that and you are applying a stress and you think the from the instrument this stress is let's say 100 mpa but if there is a circular hole there or a circular flaw at that point the stress will become 300 mpa okay but if you have a sharp crack instead of circular defective have a line crack then that stress can go up go up to from 100 mpa it can go up to 1000 mpa up to 2000 mpa so at that point is cracking this that part of cement is breaking and as soon as it breaks the crack keeps on propagating so that is fracture mechanics is something which are suggest everyone everyone physics chemistry engineers or everything please have a look at that okay and please understand what are this i'll give some tutorials on fracture mechanics but fracture mechanics is a wonderful thing 
uh, that is what you have to know all right. And this structure mechanics gave you a quantification of how the stress can go up, just saying that it may for different types of cracks and whether it is shear or tension, then there are different models. Now, fortunately under compression the cracks do not generate unless when you are putting compression in the other direction sometimes there is tension. You understand? So, when you are compressing something it is deforming this way. So, on the perpendicular so sometimes that can generate some crack in there. So, un even under compression compression testing compression loads so when you have a bridge or something like that and heavy trucks are going the compression there, but it might create, create crack in the other direction. So, you have to make sure to prevent the crack propagation in those directions. Now, there are turbidimeter and air permeability tests for measuring cement fineness and both the standards actually need that and modern cements the average blend fineness they actually ranges between 3000 to 5000 centimeters square per gram all right or 300 to 500 meters square per kg. So, these are the things which the standards set up and they do set up because they are very professional and they do lots of research and they then eventually they come up come up to these things. ASTM is very very good I, I like that ASTM because ASTM generates standards through lots of research research and things. And also international standards are also there. Fortunately, I was very pleased when I used it in Australia in the dental standards laboratory. I, well, I developed some work and it was published as a paper and then international standards they took it up as a as a standard for that kind of dental cement polymeric dental cement curing and things like that. Can I go to the next slide? Aggregates. Okay. Aggregate is a mixture of fine rocks and sand. So now we are slowly coming to see how either cement is made or otherwise if you have different materials how you can mix them and you can generate something. This is the element in concrete which transfers the load through it and it can also call it reinforcement in concrete composites. So, if you have fine rocks and sand then what the sand can do if you have a like I mentioned if you have a cement and if there is a hole there there is a stress concentration of 3. But if you put sand and if the sand can go and fill up the holes, that means the stress concentration is not because the sand is taking up the load. A sand is also a ceramic. So you might think we might think that when you walk onto the seaside, so you just walk on sand, the sand goes down. But if sand is there in the right place, it can push you back, all right. So if the sand is in the cement and if it fills up the holes then the, the stress concentration will not be 3. This, the stress and concentration at the tip of the will be only 1 which is the normal which is the normal stress all right. Okay. Now, the middle sentence by using proper amount of fly ash aggregates or using proper fly ash this aggregates and alkali reaction can be control again. So, fly ash is also a very small particle it may be even smaller in a diameter than the sand. So, the fly ash can go into fill up those sand and it can also form a bond. So, that way it can generate better property. So, if there is no voids or holes like that then it typically the actual strength of the cement or the concrete goes up. Because if you do not have a stress concentration, so you can apply three times more load and it will it can still bear it. Okay? 
and then comes chemical admixtures. So, this is where chemistry is very important. The main function of chemical admixture is to is just to support the reaction. So, that means, whatever reaction happens, you put chemical admixtures that means, it is not it is like a catalyst, it is like a catalyst. So, the, what does the catalyst do? Can you speak up loudly? Yes. So, it helps getting it more and more. Okay. So, so that is what that, that is what it is. So, if you are a cricket cricket captain, you are if you are captain of India, who is the current captain? Virat Kohli. Okay. So, if he needs wickets, so he has to use a good spinner. And if he if he needs lesser runs, then he has to get, get a good fast bowler, something like that. So they are all chemical admixtures. Okay. So one time he was a chemical person, like a spinner. The next time when you don't want them to make run, you use an engineer. So you use a fast bowler. All right. Indian cricket has been very good. Oh, by the way, I did mention to you, sometimes I, it takes a bit of pass it on. This is that song which I created on Gavaskar studio recorded. And sometimes if I if I have access to a video, then I send send this to Sunil Gavaskar and he played it in the Cricket Association of India, all right, and he was very happy. You can pass it on. Oh, you are taking a picture. So, I put Sunil Gavaskar's picture. It was, to, it was when he was in, in our place, and next is my photo. I do not know whether there is any uh, speaker or putting a CD, but we can do that during lunch time. Because I used Musicians in Kolkata, you know, Kolkata and Mumbai, they are very good music places, and the musicians are so <coughs> good. I had the best professional musicians because that's one what I do. It costs a bit more money, but you get more quality. Likewise, if you are making a structure, buy the best components. It costs you money, but you get much better results. Okay, and try to try to influence your management because they have to get money, but you can explain to them what is the advantage. All right. Chemical admixtures confirm the requ requirement of ASTM these three standards. Air entraining agent. <coughs> the dosage of air ent ent entraining agent depends on flyers content. Now, once you now we are talking about, we had talked about cements earlier, but now we are talking about uh, fly ash in cement, okay? cement and concrete. So, it depends on the fly ash content, it depends on the LOI value of fly ash. What is LOI? And what does it mean? Amount of carbon which did not burn. Unburnt carbon. Yes. Dr. Ropis, I you missed the lecture yesterday, so that's why so I, that's why I just wanted to let you know what LOI is. Because no, <coughs> normally for others main side of people other researchers, LOI means uh, limited oxygen index, but it's not limited oxygen index, it's loss on ignition. Okay. That means it's the amount of carbon. Air in training agent requirement increases with the increase in any of the above three values. So, which means, and these are some of the this publication, and that's what I'd request you, particularly researchers, PhD scholars, and things like that. Whenever you make your presentations, 
please always highlight or present the source from where you have, you have got the things, okay? because that makes it much more authentic and that makes it nice and polite to the people who have come up with this information. All right. So, does Gavaskar picture look good? Very good? Yes. Thank you. And he was so happy. I remember when he, I used to meet him in Melbourne, when I used to live in Melbourne, Melbourne Cricket Ground. And have I told you this once? It was the last day, uh, final day of the test match between Australia and India. And then Gavaskar was the captain of India, Alan Border was the captain of Australia. So, I was in the ground. I used to go there very often. And then, everyone realized that Australia has lost, lost so many wickets, so India was going to win. But Alan Border was trying to delay the thing. And all on a sudden, huge rain started coming down. And what happened? We got very surprised. But eventually, they came and put all those covers on the thing. And there was a lady sitting close by. He said, see, God must be Australian, because otherwise, why would it be in rain? There was no cloud and anything, but he, wa he wanted to put the rain so that Australia does not lose. And then I, I said, Madam, I can see your point. May I know? What's your name? She said, I'm Pamela Gavaskar. So, she is Gavaskar's wife. So, because she felt so sad, because she wanted her husband, the captain, to win the match. Okay, but that was nice because at least, at least I knew that Mrs. Gavaskar was sitting there. All right, and Melbourne Cricket Ground is something where players, visitors, they are all together. So there is no special case for players and things like this. People are, are very, uh, very good. Okay, I spent six months in Melbourne and then. I moved to All right, can we take a couple of minutes break? Or do you want me to continue? Continue? All right. Because I'm fortunate to have a little bit of coffee, uh, tea here, but I, you are not having that tea, that's why I, I, I thought you need a bit of break or two. Accelerators. Now, sometimes use of low calcium flash. Now, low calcium, is it F or C? F, yes, right, thank you. Right? Okay. Flyers causes adverse effect on early strength of con concrete, especially in cold weather situation, compared to normal Portland cement concrete with similar working. So, and similar 28 day. Thing. So, this brings you the fact that depending on the temperature, now what is the temperature in North, in South Korea now? For the last couple of weeks, this Olympic, winter Olympics was, so if winter Olympics was the temperature way below 0 degree, okay? Minus, okay. So, if you are making something there, if you are making some concrete structure there, and compared to that, if you are making some concrete structure in Colombo or now even in Kanpur, the temperature is very different. That is what keeping in mind. So, when you are doing that, you have to re realize what is the temperature around, because the curing is occurring under normal conditions. Okay? Now, normally chemists, they do curing, polymer chemists, they do curing in an oven, likewise the material scientists and okay people like that you do it in a in an oven but but if you have a big structure even something the size of this room it's difficult to get such big ovens okay and that's what when i was in different science and technology organization there was a problem there was a project which came from England, they were making submarines and those structures. So, 
normally if you are using composites, composites you, you do curing. For composites used in plane, they are actually cured in furnaces. But if you are having a big ship, it is very difficult to do. That. So, that generated a research of working or curing at normal temperature over a long period of time. And I was taking a part of that. I was not a fool, but at least that gave me the vision that it is possible to make large structures, even maybe also using polymers and composites, even though the temperature you cannot use a furnace. Okay? So, that gave a very good thing that normally people think if it is a big structure you cannot use, in a, use a furnace, but then there are ways, chemical ways by which you can do that. The accelerators are used to improve this early stage strength reaction. Normally used accelerator is calcium chloride, but it is not recommended when high volume fly ash is used, because I think fly ash cannot tolerate, because fly ash would say that I fly ash, I will do the work, and if calcium chloride says no, I will do the work, then they will start fighting with you between each other. That's what I I used to say. The what was the former captain of Indian team, Dhoni? That was Dhoni and Virat Kohli did for some time. So, and particularly I used to see that when if Dhoni was going, Kohli would stop taking runs. Okay, it was good for India, but I have not met either of them, so I cannot say that. Okay. Have you seen this? Also, another function of accelerator is to offset increasing in setting time when <coughs> using fly ash. So, when you are using fly ash, sometimes it may take a bit more time. So, if you use accelerator, it will increase the reaction. So, now I will come, now we are coming to the <coughs> use of cement and fly ash, and I will after this slide, we will take a five minute break and they will get back. Nowadays, fly ash is used to replace some amount of portrait cement. So, it is worth examining the similarities and differences between portrait cement and fly ash. This is table 7. It gives detailed idea of chemical com compounds present in two types of fly ash. Class fly ash F, which has low calcium, and then class C which is high calcium. And one natural pozzolan, this is called class N pozzolan. It is another type of, what is pozzolan? It is something which actually goes into the cement and it, it makes it hard. Class N is raw or calcined natural pozzolan such as from diatomaceous arsen. So, it is not a fly ash, but it is still something which is available if you do not have fly ash, another same step which you can still use it. So, the typical chemical compounds in pozzolans and Portland cement, you have silica, class silic not sil yes, silicon oxide, you have 50 about 55 percent, in class C you have about 40 percent, and in class N you have about 58 percent. And if you look at Portland cement on its own, it is only about 23. So, the content of silica, silicon oxide, I think it should be SiO2. Yes, SiO2. Please put the O2, the 2 is missing somewhere. Then Al2O3 is quite high for class F and about 17 or 18, 17 or 18 for both class C and class N. And in Portland cement is 4.3. So, L203 is much higher in the fly ash. Now, calcium oxide in class F is about 8.7, and in class C is above 20, so 24, but in class N is 3. But normally in Portland cement, this 
calcium oxide is very high. So, likewise it, it gives this information. So, that means if you have Portland cement and if you can use different types of fly edge, so you can make selections on the basis of that and the source is given there. So, this is the reference. 